So we've gone through all that work to get auth working. And the goal of that is to eventually be able to add a house into our database and get it to show up on a map. So I thought, why don't we pause from that quest of getting a house into our database and let's just work on getting a map showing up on the home page. We won't have any data to display on the map yet, but at least we'll have something visual on the screen to look at. So we're going to be spending our time right now on the home page, and that's in the index. And right now it just says div home. So the goal of this video is to get a, a map showing up rendering here on this home page. So we're going to start by setting up um, two divs on the left and the right because the map is going to be over here on the right and we're gonna have a list of homes up here on the left. So we're gonna convert this div or we're gonna say it's gonna class name of flex. And inside of here, we're gonna create two other divs. So one div for the left. And um, so this will be the house list and another div over here on the right. Oh, div n, what is that? Div, div um, with the map. Okay, once I save it, it, it looks a lot nicer formatted. So if I were to come back here, house list and map, it's not exactly looking great yet. So we're gonna come in and add a class name to this house list and we're gonna say that it will have a width of half the screen and we'll put a little bit of padding in here for PB4. And I wanna add one last thing, some um, inline styling to just set the, the height on this. So we're going to say it's going to be a max height with a calc of 100 VH, so the whole uh, viewport height, minus the height of the, um, of the nav, which is 64 pixels. And then we'll also set what to do when it overflows. Um, so when we have too many houses to fit on sort of one screen, what should it do? So we're going to say overflow X is going to scroll. So this won't really come into play yet because we're not, we don't have any content in here, but that's set up. And now even giving that width of 50%, you can see the house list is here, the maps over here on the right. But why don't we also just add a class name of um, width of half the screen to the map just so that they're both 50%. And now we're going to replace this word map with a component map. So let's uncomment out um, this map import, and then we'll convert this into the component, self-closing. So it's gonna be big fat error on the screen right now because we don't have a map component, but that's where we're gonna move into and create. So this is coming from SRC components and then map. Okay, so what we're going to do is uncomment a few things. So why don't we just go down to this point? So leave the last three commented out, but everything up into that point is fine. We're not gonna use everything yet, but it shouldn't cause any problems. And the first thing we're gonna create is our interface and it's so iProps and there's gonna be nothing in this yet because we don't have any props yet. Eventually we will, but we'll just set it up. And we're gonna export a default function called map. So map is going to receive some props and those props will have a type of I props, even though there's none right now. And then the goal of our function will be to return um, a div that contains the react um, map box map inside of it. So we're going to return a div and we're going to add a class name to this and it will just be text black and also relative. Relative will come into play a little bit later as we position the search bar within this map. So inside of this div is where we put the React map GL. And it's going to be self-closing. Actually, no, we'll do it on self-closing like this. So we won't have anything inside of this yet, but that's where we're going to iterate or map all of the houses and display them on the map. We just don't have any houses to display yet. So you can see that it's giving us an error. It's expecting some props. Um, it wants a width, it wants a height. It also wants some other things like um, the access token that we set up. So the, our goal now is basically to fill out all of the props required to get this map showing correctly. 
You can see here though, oops, invalid pixel coordinate. Okay, so we have some issues to deal with. So the first thing we're going to do is set up a ref. Now we don't need this ref yet, but I wanna create a ref to the map itself because we're gonna use that later on to get the bounding box coordinates, basically what portion of the world is showing up on this map. Um, so for now, we're just gonna put the map into a ref. So map ref is equal to the use ref hook. And the type of data we're going to put in here is going to be um, the React map itself or null because it always starts out sort of null at the beginning. So we could even pass in null and then it will be set later on down here. We also need some state. So the way Mapbox works is as you drag the map around, um, you have to update the state of basically what is the current latitude, longitude, and zoom of the map. So we're going to put that into some state called viewport, set viewport, and that is use state. And we can even give it a type. So view state that we have imported from uh, React Map GL package. And now let's give it some default values. So we'll give it a latitude of, I don't know, 43 and a longitude of minus 79. So this is somewhere in Southern Ontario in Canada where I am, but you can put in whatever latitude longitude you want, wherever you're coming from, get it to show up over your city. And we'll start out with a zoom of 10. So we need to come into this React map component and splat in all of the viewport um, objects and properties as uh, props into this component. And we need to give it a height so we're gonna say that it takes up 100% of the container that it's in. We're gonna, sorry, width. We're gonna give it a height, and this will be the same thing. It's gonna be a calc of 100 VH minus the 64 pixels for the nav. So let's save this. Okay, no error that pops up anymore, but we have this no token warning. So we need to pass in our token. So this would be the Mapbox API access token. And this comes from our environment variables that we set up in one of the earlier videos. So it'll be process.env next public underscore map box API token like this. So let's refresh the page again and we have a map showing up and it's over Niagara Falls, Buffalo. I guess that's where that latitude longitude is. I can not drag it around yet. So it's sort of stuck in that location. I'm trying to drag it, I'm trying to zoom, it's not doing anything. So the way you fix that problem of it not being able to zoom is you implement a function um, on viewport change. So this is an event that happens every time the user tries to drag it or zoom and it gives you something called the next viewport. Next viewport to an arrow function. So our job is basically to take this next value and update our state with it so that the map moves because the map is always showing what's inside of this viewport. So we can call set viewport and give it, um, do we have to do a dot, dot, dot? I don't think so. We can just put in the um, next viewport like that. So now I come back and it allows me to drag it around it allows me to zoom in and out. So it's looking good. So why don't I take this React Map GL and put it into our ref that we're going to use um, later on. So we'll say ref, and this has given us the instance to an arrow function, and we're going to say the map ref dot current is equal to instance, just like that. So now whenever this initializes, it stores an instance of itself in this map ref, which um, yeah, will be good for the bounding box. So I wanted to set two more properties. I wanna set a min zoom of five and a max zoom of um, 15. You can tweak these based on what you think makes sense. It just stops you from zooming in sort of too far, like further than this. And it also stops you from zooming out past this. And the reason why is because 
it's going to be loading all of the homes within this bounding box. So if you can zoom out to the whole world, it's going to try to load the whole world's worth of data. You can limit that on the back end, but I just thought like this is a good zoom limit. So you can set it to whatever you want. So map styling next. Our map right now is this uh, sort of light gray, but because we're doing a dark theme, I wanted to change the map to sort of reflect the same styling. I've already set up um, a style for this. Mapbox allows you to use others or create your own. So I'm just gonna paste in the one that I created, but I'll in the um, comments below this video, I will include a link so that you can create your own Mapbox style if you want it to look a little bit different. So come back here. The map is now looking um, nice, this sort of darkish bluey gray color. And it allows us to zoom in and out, but not too far in and out. And um, that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. We have the map showing. It's now time to move back to this add house so we can get houses into our database so that we can eventually display them on the map. So the files we worked with in this video were just two. The home page to uh, split the home page up into these two divs left and right, and then this map component over here. All right, thank you. Let's move on.